Hello YouTube, Mr. Evans here with my vlog number 120. I think the camera is a little crooked, sorry about that. Today is Tuesday and the time is about 526. A lot of grading, very unfinished, but I gotta keep this quick and head out because um, I have an appointment. And also I think my battery is getting a little bit low, so I don't wanna have that be cut off. So let me check in about the day. Today I feel like was sort of the Maybe the companion to yesterday, right? Yesterday I said the whole day was really good, but the rough moments in it threw a negative color over everything. Today, it kind of felt like the opposite. The whole day was really, well, it was not exactly the opposite. Um, um, the whole day was really good. Um, and the rough moments actually kind of made it better. Not that I liked having them, but this was another thing where uh, I was able to deal with them um, in a way that I felt didn't up my anxiety or depression or, or anything. So uh, really good there, happy with how that went and I'm happy to share today's wonder quote with you, which coincidentally is about happiness. And it's, a, it's very true, it's by the Dalai Lama. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. And I wish I could say more on this, but I feel like it's just so accurate. Like there's just, all, there's almost nothing for me to say about it. Um, but I think what does come of it is basically this sort of idea that we're not owed happiness, which I'm not going to say I 100% agree with, to be honest with you, because I, I think, you know, there is a, a degree of happiness that, that you deserve, you know. Um, but it's not owed to you by the world. It's owed to you by yourself. And so, as a teacher, the way this comes into play is... Um, making decisions that lead to um, positivity for you. And I'd say that the, the first of these, uh, well, 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 one great example of this uh, was today in one of my periods where um, this is actually, I'm gonna go ahead and merge right in. This was the first thing that made me smile today. So I think I'll just take a little longer with this part today. First thing that made me smile was um, <clears throat> in one of my periods, uh, I really started getting, um, I don't know, we just really had a good, how, how do I even put this? It felt very personal with that period. Um, I, was just kind of talking to them and this one group, like for some reason they really got interested in like, you know, what, you know, what, what, what's good about being a teacher and what's hard about being a teacher. And I gave them all of the great, I gave them all of the examples, um, you know, or at least, at least like as many as I could. Uh, and uh, it was really cool being able to like have that personal conversation. and. Later on in the period, um, there was this one student that was trying to do the, the cup game, but she was using like a bottle of perfume or something. And so I was just like, or not perfume, but like body spray. And so I was just like, that's a break, you know? So last like three, four minutes of the class period, I just took a, a cup, well, like one of my plastic cups that I have, and I just put it face down in front of her. I didn't even have to say anything. She just started doing it again. Um, again, this is one of those decisions where it's like, was it the right decision to make? Especially when it comes to classroom management? Probably not. I don't think it necessarily creates a net gain for classroom management, providing the student with something to make noise with. But I think it does provide a net gain for relationship building. And definitely for happiness. Especially when, after she had done it a couple of times, I went over and I was like, here, let me show you. <laughs> and I did it really fast and they were all like, whoa. It just, it made me happy. And I think that when your teachers are happy, um, your students are likely to be happier as well. So that was a, a big uh, moment that made me smile, kind of that, that whole period. Another thing that made me smile today 
Well, or, you know what? I, no, I actually, there was something else I wanted to say about that. Uh, last period of the day, one of my students asked me the question, because it, it, it had kind of been not really a bad period, but just there were moments that were hard. But I think they appeared harder to the students than they did to me, because I had seen way harder um, moments um, than that. And so the student asked me, do you regret being a teacher? You know, which, after seeing the way that things were, it was like, yeah, it's not a surprising ask. Um, do you regret being a teacher? And I said, no, of course not, no. And it, was, and it was an easy thing to say after having that discussion with the students earlier in the day. I said, no, I, I don't. I regret some of the decisions I've made this year as a teacher, um, but I don't regret being a teacher. This is what I do. Um, I don't know, a truth we don't often uh, address. But I think most teachers would say that, yeah, they... There may be an unhappiness that spreads throughout it, and there may be difficulties, and there may be hard times, but there's something that keeps us in it. There's something that keeps us in the work. I'd call it fulfillment. The last, uh, sorry, the next thing that made me smile was uh, that I got to reach out for uh, support um, with uh, another member of our school community. And um, I'm just so thankful that, that this person was so uh, helpful. It, it's always good to loop other people into what's happening in my class because it's just this big reminder that like, Teaching can be a very isolating profession if we let it become that way. And so um, I'm glad that I took the step to make sure that that didn't happen. And um, I think the last thing that made me smile today, you know, I'm kind of struggling to come up with something, but it's not because um, there were no moments, it's just, uh, a lot of the little moments have kind of escaped me. <laughs> I'd say one thing that uh, felt good, at least, was a lot of students right now are worried about the coronavirus. And it, it just is like, it, it's something to be alert about, it's something to be aware of, but there's this perception that like, Everybody has it, we're all gonna get it, it's, you know, everybody's gonna get super sick, and it's just like, it's not like that. You know, it's a sickness, it's out there, it's not good, we gotta take precautions, but we don't have to panic. Um, I mean, hardly anybody has it, you know, percentage-wise. And so I got to have that discussion with them today, and just get really personal, and just be like, look, guys, there is no reason to panic. Um, I have to say, I don't think it was effective. I think that those fears are far too ingrained and I should have done this a lot sooner. But better late than never, I and mean, at least they have the information now. And um, I also mentioned to them uh, the websites so that they can check for factual information because these news sources have been just really, they're not misreporting, but they're trying to make it scarier than it needs to be. I was really happy to see that the CDC um, actually released several resources for dealing with the stress associated with pandemics. Some of those resources aimed specifically at children. I would have used them except they're designed for younger children. Um, so I'm hoping that my students will get over that scare and uh, that we'll, uh, we'll stay healthy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog right there, YouTube. I have got to get out of here. Uh, you have a great rest of your day. I'm going to get to my appointment and I will talk to you tomorrow. Oh, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Bye-bye, YouTube. Oops.